When I was growing up, my cousins and I, we, we loved to play in Grandma and Grandpa's backyard. Uh, they had a big backyard, or at least it seemed like it as we, we were children. Uh, Grandpa had an orchard with, uh, with several apple trees and, and with uh, three cherry trees. And we always enjoyed um, climbing in those trees. Now, there was one, uh, one apple tree in particular that we, we enjoyed climbing in. It, it, um, uh, Grandma and Grandpa always called it a, a, a tree with uh, transparent apples. Now, they were kind of yellowish, uh, kind, of, kind of looked like this. I, I never understood why they called them transparent. You know, you couldn't, couldn't see through them. They were yellow apples to me. You know, Grandma would make, um, would make uh, applesauce, and, and she would make bank, baked apples with them. And, and um, so we, we loved to climb in this tree. And also when, the, when the, um, the apples were getting ripe, you know, we would always try and spot the, the biggest, juiciest apple and, and see if we could climb up in the tree and, and, um, and to, to pick it and then, then take a bite of it. Now, sometimes when we bit into, an app, into one of these apples, we found something uh, unexpected. Now, our, um, our parents and grandparents would often say, oh, you're just getting a little meat with the apple. You need a little, little protein there. But um, you know, somehow that, that impacted uh, the, the experience of, of eating that, uh, that juicy apple. Now, you know, the... Over time, as I got a little bit older, I got a little more discerning, and, and I realized that I could look at that apple, and, and if I saw a little, little scar on it like that, that was often an ind- indication that there was a worm inside. Now, the, the, um, the scar was not very large, because the worm, when it, when it went into the apple, was not that, that large, but the longer it was in, uh, the more the apple it ate, the larger it grew. It was something that started out very small and, and seemed to, to have little, little impact or over time you know, could, could ruin that entire apple on, on the inside. And what, what often happened was you couldn't always tell it on the outside that there, there was a worm on the inside. You know, that's a pretty good description of sin in our life. You know, sin can enter into our lives sometimes in very unnoticeable ways. It may leave a little scar or, or a blemish, but if that sin is allowed to continue to eat away at us, if that sin is allowed to continue to, to grow and, and develop within us, it, it can grow into to something that is, that is very, very, destru- very destructive. Of allowed to, to flourish, it can begin to, to eat away at us. It, it can begin to, to destroy us. You know, this is the first Sunday of the year, uh, of the church year, that um, is called Lent. Now, Lent is the season of the church year that, that starts on Ash Wednesday. Ash Wednesday was just the, this past Wednesday. And uh, it goes all the way to Easter. And so the time between uh, Lent and Easter, or between Ash Wednesday and Easter, is 40 days plus Sundays. Now this year it's kind of unique. You know, the Ash Wednesday and, and uh, Easter, the, the dates fluctuate. They're always the same number of days apart. But this year, Ash Wednesday was on Valentine's Day. And this year, Easter is going to be on April Fool's Day. You know, just found a, an interesting, interesting combination there. Well, during Lent, it's a time of, of spiritual self-examination. We're, we're spiritually preparing ourselves for the Easter celebration. Uh, during the, the season of Lent, we, we die to sin, we die to self in order to be made alive in Christ. Now, a key verse uh, during the, the season of Lent can be found in, in Psalm 51, uh, chapter 51, verse 10. Create in me a pure heart, O God, and renew a, a steadfast spirit within me. To say it another way, O God, give me a fresh start. Help me to unravel the chaos of my life. 
during this, this Lenten season, we're preaching a, a series that we're, we're calling Peeled. And it has a, a subtitle of, of, of What's Under Your Skin? Uh, this morning, I, I'm asking the question, what, what's really inside? You know, not what do, do you try and cause people to see on the outside of you, but what, what's going on, on on the inside? What, what are your motivations? What, what's the condition of your heart? Are you fully committed to, uh, to following Jesus with, with all your heart and with all your life? You want everyone to believe that, that you have it all together, but, uh, but you know the things that, that you struggle with. You know, Lent's a, a time of, of self-examination. It's, it's a time to, to look at those places that are maybe being infested by, by worms and, and sin in our life and, and seeking to, to do something about it. The Apostle Paul tells us that, that we have two basic options. Uh, we can live our lives guided by the Holy Spirit, or we can live our lives in, in such a way that, that we are acting on uh, sinful desires, or, or he calls it our, our, our sinful nature. Listen to, to the words of the Apostle Paul found in Galatians chapter 5, beginning with verse 16. So I say, live by the Spirit, and you will not gratify the desires of the sinful nature. For the sinful nature desires what is contrary to the Spirit, and the Spirit what is contrary to the sinful nature. They're in conflict with each other, so that you do not do what you want. But if you are led by the Spirit, you are not under the law. You know, there's a daily battle that each of us can fight. A, a battle between good and evil. A, a battle between doing and, and living the way God wants us to live, or, or doing and, and living in in the way that, um, that, that our sinful desires, our sinful nature might, might draw us. God's ways are contrary to, to the ways of sin. And the ways of sin are always contrary to God's ways. In verse 19, Paul says, The acts of the sinful nature are obvious. Now, if you're living your life in such a way that, that you are being led by the Holy Spirit, that you sense the, the Spirit's promptings in, in your life. I, I believe that uh, the, the acts of the sinful nature are, are more obvious. If, if you've committed yourself to, to studying God's Word, I, I believe that, that the acts of the sinful nature are, um, are, are more obvious. But if, um, if you're listening to the voices of this world, I don't know the, that the acts of the sinful nature are so obvious. You know, Paul goes on to, to list some of those acts of, of the sinful nature. I think it's a warning to, to followers of Christ and, and you know, how it is that we should live or, or shouldn't live. You know, Paul goes on and, and he says, um, you know, the acts of the sinful nature are, are obvious. They're, they're sexual immorality, impurity. And debauchery. You know, we live in, in, a, in a culture where everything goes when it comes to our, our sexuality. And without playing, if we try and place any moral boundaries or, or uh, value judgments on, on sexual practices, then, then we seem to be accused of being too puritanical or, or out of touch of, with the world in, in which we live. You know, just this week, I, I read an article that was linked to a, a college ministry website, and um, it presented data showing that where most teenagers get their information or guidance about um, you know, sexual immorality or, or sexual morality is through pornography. Now, as I read the, this article, it was... Um, you know, pretty amazing to, to me as it, the, they did this research, they, they said, you know, the church doesn't talk about it much, and parents don't talk about it much, and well, that's nothing that, that's new. Uh, when it comes to the school, they teach uh, sex ed, but in sex ed, it, it's talking more about the, the physiological aspects of, of our sexuality. 
And they said, kids, by and large, are, their, their idea of, of sexual morality or what is appropriate or okay sexually is coming from pornography. And this, um, this article said that that wasn't good. Surprise! Um, you know, but as they, as they were talking about this, you know, they said that uh, even what, what's happening, because pornography is, is guiding the, the sexual values of, of our teenagers and, and young adults, they, they go on to, to say that, um, that pornography is a, is a significant contrib- contributing factor to sexual violence in our culture. You know, Paul goes on with the, this list of, of, of sinful acts of the sinful nature. He says, idolatry. Worshiping something or someone other than God. I think you know, in the Bible we, we often hear of idolatry, of you know, some graven image, some, something that has been carved and, and they worship, or, or something that, that has been, um, been made out of, out of metal and, and some object that is an object of worship. But also idolatry can, can include um, you know, worshiping money. You know, worshiping power, or worshiping our, our work, worshiping sports, worshiping celebrities. Now, it's not that, um, that money and work and sports and celebrity, that there's anything wrong in and of the, themselves with those things, but if we allow them to become our idols, if we allow them to, to displace our worship of the one true God, then you know, that's when it... Uh, you know, is, is an act of, of sinful nature to, to do that. You know, goes on, the next indicates witchcraft. You know, seeking spiritual direction or from spiritual forces other than the Holy Spirit. Acts of the sinful nature include hatred, discord, jealousy, fits of rage, selfish ambition, dissensions, factions, and envy, drunkenness, orgies, and and the like. I warn you, as I did before, that those who live like this will not inherit the kingdom of God. And in contrast to to the acts of the the sinful nature, Paul identifies characteristics that he calls spiritual fruit. Spiritual fruit that if if we're being led by, if we're following the leading of the Holy Spirit in our life, then, then this is the type of spiritual fruit that will be produced. He says, but the, the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such there is no law. Those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the sinful nature with its passions and desires. Since we live by the Spirit, let us keep in step with the Spirit. Let us not become conceited, provoking, and envying each other. You know, I believe it's important for us to have an awareness of the, the acts of the sinful nature. But also, I, I believe that what's going to, to help take us down the road in, in our Christian walk is to doing things that we're, we're producing that spiritual fruit, that love, joy, peace, patience, gentleness, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, and self-control. I want you to become more aware during this Lenten season of what's going on inside of you. What's really inside of you as, uh, as you walk through your, your daily lives? What's going on in your spirit? Are, are you living in step with God's spirit? Or you're doing things that are embracing those, those acts of, of our sinful nature. You know, this week, our, our memory verse comes from, from Psalm 51.10. It says, Create in me a pure heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. As we begin this Lenten season, it, that may be a good verse, not just for this week, but, but for, the, for the whole season. I want you to to daily examine what's going on inside. What, what's really inside? What, what are your, your motives? I don't want you to, to simply do this, uh, 
maybe when you wake up in the morning and when you go to bed at night, although that's not a bad time to, to do it, I want you to, to do this practice of self-examination several times throughout the day. Several times throughout the day, I, I want you to, to reflect upon, you know, what's my motivation right now? Am I saying something that is, is honoring to God or or am I saying something that is displeasing to God right now? Am I involved in doing something that is, is producing spiritual fruit in my life? Or am I involved in something right now that I'm actually following my, my sinful nature? You know, several times through, throughout the day, I want you to, to, to do that exercise of self-examination. Now, you don't need to, to spend 10 minutes on it. I mean, just in the split second, thinking about, you know, What's my motivation? What's really inside of me what, that's causing me to, to say or do or, or think what I'm doing at this moment? And maybe as you do that self-evaluation, um, maybe you offer up a, a prayer of praise and thanksgiving to God. Or maybe if you realize that uh, you're, you're following your sinful nature at that point, maybe you, you pray the, this prayer from Psalm 51 and simply say, Creating me a, a pure heart, O oh God. Recognizing that what's going on at that moment isn't, uh, isn't something that, that is that, that pure. You know, I want you to ask yourself the, this question several times throughout the day. And, and the thing is, I, I don't want you to, to only ask yourself that question when, when you're doing the right thing or when, when things are, are, um, are going as they should. I want you to ask yourself that question at unexpected times. So I want to provide some symbols for you, some, some ideas of, of things that you can do um, during this Lenten season. Now, on your bulletin this morning, each of you should have a, a strip of 10 or, or 12 dots that are, are there. And those are, you can peel them off and, and they're sticky. And what, one of the things that I might encourage you to do is take it and, and put it on your watch. So just put it right there in the center of your watch. It you know, doesn't have to obstruct you seeing what time it is. But I don't know how many times I look at my watch in a day. But every time I look at that watch and, and see that dot, it's going to be a reminder what's really inside. What, what am I doing right now? Am I honoring God or, or am I following my, my, my sinful nature? Well, maybe you don't have a watch. Maybe you've got a smartphone or any phone. You'll put it somewhere on your phone, someplace that, that you're going to look, and um, all of a sudden, when you look at that phone, you're reminded, you see that dot, what's really on the inside? What's motivating me right now? Am I honoring God? Am I, am I not honoring God? Maybe you put it on your, your computer screen. Maybe you put it on your mirror in the bathroom. I don't know where that is for you, but put one or several of these dots different places that they're going to be reminders for you. And every time you see that dot over the course of the, the next um, 40 days up until Easter, I want you to ask your, yourself the question, what, what's really going on in, inside of me? What, what's going on right now? You know, for some of you, maybe the, the dot doesn't work. Maybe the dot's not big enough for you to, to see or, or bright enough to, to see. Um, I don't know if the ushers are, are back there listening, but... Um, We've, we've got some, um, some bracelets that, um, you know, they're, they're going to pass here, and, and uh, feel free to, to take one of these. The, the, the bracelet says, how's your heart today? And actually, it's not a heart, but it's, um, it's a, that symbol of a hand and a, and a heart, that, uh, that symbol that we use for, for reach out in love. You know, so, so how's your heart today? How, how are you reaching out in, in love today? You know, if you wear that, that bracelet on, on your wrist and, and uh, when, when you look down and see it throughout the day, you know, may it be a reminder of what's really inside. What's going on with, with me at this moment? You know, can you pray a prayer of thanksgiving? At that moment, are, are you praying a prayer and saying, oh God, create me a clean heart? You know, and, and renew a, a right, right spirit, a, a right focus with, within me. Uh, are you letting something take root in your life? Are you allowing something to, uh, to grow within your spirit like, 
like that worm began to, to grow in, the, in, in that, that apple on my, my grandfather's tree. You know, you know as we, we think about our hearts, as we think about uh, self-examination through this, um, through this Lenten season, I want to give you a, another next step for you to, to consider. And that is over the course of the, the next few weeks le- leading up to, to Easter, I want you to adopt a new spiritual practice. Maybe that new spiritual practice is to, uh, to pray or to, to pray more or to, to read your Bible or to have some sort of a, a, a daily devotion to, to, um, to start some sort of a, a, a spiritual discipline. Um, you know, it could be a, a practice of, of giving something up for the sake of, of God working in, in your heart and life. Uh, ushers, don't forget to go up to the balcony, too. They're feeling left out. Um, <laughs> you know, maybe, maybe it's a, an issue of, uh, of giving something up that becomes a, a spiritual discipline for you. The, this week, I had a friend that posted something on their, their Facebook page that... Um, was said, during the season of Lent, give a bag of something away every day. Doesn't have to be the, the same size bag, but they said as, as we're, we're cleaning out our, our own hearts and lives during the, this Lenten season, maybe there are things that are unnecessary in our homes that could help someone else. You know, this week I had someone talk to me that um, you know, needs a dresser. Well, I don't have an extra dresser, and I haven't found one yet. So maybe, maybe that's uh, something that, that you want to get rid of at, at your house that could help someone else that, uh, that has, a, has a need, uh, can, can use it. We received a call this week from a, from a family, that, uh, a household that had three adults and three children in it that had a fire last weekend and, and lost everything. You know, there's a, a number of different needs, and, and maybe there are things in, in our household that we can get rid of that would help them as, you know, right now they're just you know, seeking to, to get by and, until they can put their, their home back, back together. You know, what might God be stirring in you in, in the way of, a, of an act of reaching out in love or, or an act of kindness that, that is, is making a difference in, in someone's life who, who is hurting during this Lenten season? You know, as I say, um, I encourage you to, to adopt a, a new spiritual practice or, or maybe participate in a spiritual practice that you're already doing in a different way. You, know, you could join one of the, the connect groups. Uh, I think there's, a, there's an insert in, in your bulletin that, that talks about connect groups that are, are happening during, during the Lenten season. You know, tonight, you know, I'm... I'm beginning one calling uh, Draw the Circle, and, and it's a, a 40-day prayer challenge. You know, it doesn't matter whether you're a prayer warrior or you have no idea how to pray. You know, come and be a part of that, and this could be a, a spiritual practice for you over the course of the, the next 40 days that, that God works in, in your heart and life and, and, a, and an opportunity for for you to, uh, to begin to, to look at what, what's, what's on the inside. You know, Pastor Kelly is um, leading a class that doesn't begin this week, but a, a week from now called a Disciples Pathway. You know, it's looking at the, the basics of the faith. If you're wanting to explore what it maybe means to be a, a member of, of the church, or, or maybe you're already a member of church and, and you just want to be reminded of, of spiritual basics, that would be a, a great class for you to, to be a part of. You know, surprised by hope, uh, thinking about or, or, or rethinking uh, heaven, the resurrection, and, and the mission of, of the church. You know, some of you are continuing with the, the Daniel Fitness Plan, and that, that study, or, or another one that, that's called Follow, uh, one that's uh, by, by Andy Stanley that will, um, will, will trace what does it mean to, to be a, a follower of Jesus. You know, there's several opportunities, things that you can invest yourself in, connect groups during the, the season of Lent that's going to help you to grow in your spiritual journey. During the Lenten season, I want it to become a time of serious self-examination. As you figuratively peel back your exterior, 
what's really inside? What, what's going on in, inside of you? Are, are there some worms growing on the inside that, that need to be cut out? Are you producing spiritual fruit that is honoring and pleasing to God? Let us pray. Lord, create in each of us a clean heart during this Lenten season and renew a, a right spirit within our hearts. Through Christ our Lord we pray. Amen.